Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog, and today I want to tell you about the trance gate technique. This is a technique from the early 90s when trance was one of the biggest genres in the world, and you'll associate it with artists like Tiesto, where they take these big synth lines and chop them up into little stuttery steps. Nowadays you still hear this stuff in artists like Bicep and other top chart artists, so it's a technique that's really cool to have in your repertoire. So let's have a look at how to make one of these in Ableton. Okay, so what is the trans gate? Well, the trans gate is a technique where you take a long sound that fills up a lot of space, and then you chop it down into little bite-sized chunks to a rhythm. So in other words, you go from something like this, to something like this. The essential building blocks are basically a long sound that sustains at the same volume for a long time, and then a trigger that tells you when to chop up the sound. To create a long sound, you either play a synthesizer and hold down long notes, or you can also work with a really short sound and then just put a load of reverb on there, maybe even some like compression to make sure that the reverb all stays at a relatively persistent volume. The end result here is that you want a wall of sound that's just taking up too much space, and then we're going to chop it up. A lot of modern artists also use vocals for this. So the sound of the human voice is something we attach to very strongly when we're listening to something. And so if you put like just the snippet of a human voice in there, plus a whole bunch of reverb and then chop that up, it's going to automatically be pretty damn stimulating. Let me show you the basic setup in Ableton. So first things first, we're going to need a source sound that we're then going to chop up. Let's use any synthesizer. I recently picked up Arturia's Pigments, so let's use that. So the goal here is to play long sustained notes and we just need to find a preset that sustains at quite a high level. That means that when you hold down the key, it stays playing loud. So we're not looking for like a pluck, for instance, or a percussion sound. First, let's just draw in a few notes and let's do a simple one note per bar chord progression. So we'll create a MIDI clip and we'll play in some notes. We'll just do a simple three chord chord progression, for instance. So we'll go from here to here to here and hold that last one for two bars. Now we're going to go into pigments and just zap through the presets and find something that works. This one will work, but let's thicken out the sound by playing multiple notes at the same time. Let's maybe do a power chord. A power chord just means you're playing a note, then an octave above or below it, and then the perfect fifth, which is seven semitones up. So let's just create those power chords real quick. We duplicate it, hold down shift up, and then press down once so that we've created an octave above. Then let's make the perfect fifth, which is just seven semitones up from the lower one. Now that will sound like this. So let's play those chords and find a preset that we like. Let's use this. It's a nice kind of full sound and it'll sound even better when we cut from it. So this track we're going to call it the source sound. Now the next track that we're going to make is what we're going to call the trigger track. The trigger track, we're not actually going to hear the sounds on it at all. We're just going to place sounds at the right moment so that they tell the source sound when to cut in and out. Let's just put some audio samples in there. So let's call this the trigger track. Then let's grab ourselves a simple audio sample. Let's make it really short. And let's create a pattern that sounds good. So let's first go to 16th notes grid. That's always a good place to start and draw in a pattern. And in this case, what I'm going to do is every cluster of three 16th notes that almost always sounds good. And let's just duplicate that all along the timeline and to see what that sounds like. So as I said, we're not actually going to put that sound in the final composition. What we're listening for here is its rhythm, the rhythm that we are going to apply from this onto the source sound. 
And we do that using the gate. Now the gate is an effect that actually it sets a threshold volume and it only lets the signal through when a sound goes over that threshold. Usually you would apply it to like a microphone to make sure that the microphone is completely cut until the voice starts to speak and then it opens up again. But in this case, we're going to abuse it. We're going to do something similar to how you can use sidechain compression. We're going to do sidechain gating. So the gating tool is not going to listen to the incoming signal. It's going to listen to an external signal, in this case, the trigger. So in terms of simple steps, all you got to do is go to audio effects, you grab yourself a gate, put it on the sound source, and you'll see now, hopefully, that the sound source is silent. See that? Because it's not loud enough. Oh, so we've got to raise the threshold a bit so that it's not over there. But this is not going to take us anywhere. First, we need to add in the trigger. So we use this little triangle to open up the advanced section. And here is sidechain, the same way that in the compressor there's a sidechain. And you can turn it on, take the audio from, and then take the trigger track. Then you bring down the threshold until it starts to hit that threshold. Look at this. So you see now how the sound, it follows the rhythmical pattern of the trigger. And a very classic one would be to put it on every 16th note, for instance, like this. And the crucial part of this is also that you can control the release time to make it more or less snappy. Look what happens when I tweak the release time. Let me do the exact same, but with a voice. So here's a vocal. Now, one of the easy wins on this kind of a thing is to put massive reverb on it. Then we get ourselves the gate. We open up the side chain, activate it, put on the trigger and find the right threshold again. Let's try a different pattern. Not bad. And we can even put a reverb right after it again, just to give those things space again. And so there you have it. That's the basis of the trance gate technique. Remember to just make yourself a wall of interesting texture and then chop it up using a trigger. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel and come check out one of our courses on underdog.brussels. We're an online school, not just a YouTube channel. Check out one of the other videos and until next time, keep producing, be good to one another and take care. Bye bye. <laughs>